Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be continuing our journey with study log. We're going to be seeing how we can integrate a dashboard into our application. As well, we're going to be seeing how we can configure study log through our app settings. If you'd like to learn about .NET, AWS, and Azure, please make sure you subscribe and like this video. Now, let's jump into it. So what I have here is I have our previous application where we have integrated study log into our application. If you have not, not watched this video, I'll link it here somewhere so you're able to watch it. But basically, we have done a pretty basic implementation of Serilog where we have created a service. And within that service, we have configured the Serilog implementation with writing to our console. And basically, we have the capability to writing to a file. We configured the information to be written, to be written in a JSON format. As well, we have set up where the file will be stored. And we made the configuration that is going to be written every single day. So now if we go here to the logs folder, we can see here that our application is writing the logs into this file. This file has not been, this application has not been executed for the last couple of days. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to run my application, open it up inside our web browser. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to execute a few requests. And now if we come here, we can see I have a new, new logs file. And within that logs file, we're able to see that I have all of the new logs available here. And as well, I have the logs all populating here. Okay, perfect. So now that I have this, now we're going to be seeing how we can actually make this a bit more abstract by basically not hard coding all of the configuration inside my application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the configuration to app settings and let my application read it directly from app setting and execute. And this will facilitate it when I want to actually deploy my application so I can have a very high level of logging on development and testing. But once my application do go to production, I can change the logging mechanism from there. So I'm not really bombarded with a lot of logs that I don't really need to have in production. And this will give me a lot of flexibility. So for me to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my app settings and I'm going to start updating it here. Well, for now, I don't really need this because we're going to be replacing it with the log. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to start adding here my seri log configuration. So we're going to put seri log and we're going to start adding all of this configuration here. So first thing that I want to do is I want to add the using. And the using here means that what are the syncs? And we have already spoke about syncs before, but basically what are the mechanisms that I want to display my logs out to? And we're going to be using the files, the console as well. We're going to be integrating with a dashboard and this is called SEQ. So we're going to be integrating with that as well. I don't have it anything configured, but we're going to add it right from now. And then we're going to be add, we're going to be building on top of that. So the first one is going to be log. And if you want to make it easy for yourself, what you can do is you can just go to your program.cs and you can just copy these. So this is going to be the file name. So I'm just going to copy it. So I don't have to type all of it. So this is for the files. And now we're going to add the other one, which is going to be for console. And console is basically going to be file.console and for the dashboard we're going to be adding it later then what i want to do is i want to add the minimum level of logs and basically i'm going to specify the default one which is going to be on an information level then i want to specify where do i want it to be written to so i'm going to say write to and i'm going to make this as a because i'm going to have different outputs so let me delete this and let's add it here. So the first one, which is I'm going to be writing to, it's going to be my console. So we're going to put name and we're just going to put here my console. I'm not going to add any additional configuration for that, but I'm going to add configuration for my files one. So the second one is going to be files. So I'm going to put name, file, and then I'm going to specify here my arguments. And the arguments basically is going to tell me what types of, where do I want to store the logs? How often do I want to store them? Similar to what we currently have here from this aspect with a path for the logs and the rolling interval. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first of all add the path and we're going to be taking the same path that I have here, which is going to be up logs. And I'm going to add it here. The second item, if we take a look at my app settings, we have the rolling interval. So I'm going to add this. And basically what I want to do here is I'm going to also add the frequency. So if we take a look here, I made it as rolling interval per day and this is exactly what I want. So I'm just going to add here. Oops, I'm just going to add here day. So now that I have added all of this, one of the last items that I want to add, which is going to be my enrichment of how I want to enrich my logs. So I'm going to put enrich. And here, basically, I want to specify the different items. So we're going to start with from log context. The second item is going to be with thread ID. And lastly, with machine name. Perfect. So basically, this is all of the configuration for now that I'm going to be adding inside my app settings. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to my extension here where I have configured Serilog. 
and instead of having all of this here i'm gonna remove this and i'm gonna basically use my context so now what we need to do is we need to remove this because we're not gonna be in it anymore all of this configuration is gonna come from app settings and i don't need this anymore so all i'm gonna be doing here is i'm gonna put locker config dot read from dot configuration so basically i'm telling it where it's gonna get the configuration and i'm gonna tell it that it needs to rely on the contacts to get from the configuration from there and that's it so now with this line of code with a single line of code here i was able to read all of the configuration that i have inside my app settings and now i'm able to utilize it so now if i run my application just to make it easy for us to identify the new ones from the old ones i'm just gonna change here my name of the logs file so i'm just gonna put v1 or anything like that and i'm gonna run my application go to my web browser and execute a few commands from there just gonna execute a few of them now if we go back to rider as we can see the logs are still populating correctly inside my console and if we take a look at my logs here inside my logs folder we can see here that my logs is actually being populated correctly okay great with all of that now it's gonna be more interesting because we're gonna be adding additional the dashboard that we're going to be using so what i want to do here is i'm going to add a new file and this is going to be a docker compose file so i'm just going to add it docker compose file and i'm going to i'm not going to be needing any of this i'm just going to keep my services and then i'm going to build it up so in order for me to visualize my logs i'm going to be relying on a tool called se basically this is the tool that i'm going to be utilizing and it will provide me with a dashboard that i'm actually able to utilize and if we take a look at this example here we can see that i need to install a package which is called the serilog.sync.seq which is going to allow me to do this so I'm just going to copy this go back to Rider and add it inside my terminal so let's add it here now we can see this has been added successfully so now what I want to do in order for me to utilize this before I even initiate it I want to build it my docker compose because in order for me to run this I'm going to have to rely on a docker service in order for me to have my seq service running so seq is like a service that I can actually utilize and I will be able to push my logs into it so it will be a standalone application which is going to be receiving my logs and this application, we're gonna be running it through Docker. So in order for me to build this, first of all, I need to specify my service name. I'm just gonna call it app-seq, and then I'm gonna specify here my configuration for it. The first one is gonna be the image, and it's gonna be, if I need to find the image, I can go back here and I can go to Docker Hub, and I can just type here seq. Usually the search within Docker Hub is not really that good, so we'll go to Google, we'll put Docker seq image, it will give us the right one and this is the one that we want and basically what i'm going to do is going to refer to this image data loss forward slash seq so that's going to be the one that i'm going to be using i'm going to go back here i'm going to basically just copy this one because this is going to be my image name and i'm going to take the latest next i want to specify my container name and i'm just going to call this app, app seq similar to what we had before and now i want to specify my environment and i'm just going to accept the terms and conditions so i'm going to say accept eu la i'm gonna say equal to y and lastly i want to specify my ports and basically this is going to be a play a crucial role because this is going to be the ports that my application will send the logs to and the ports that i'm going to be utilizing to have a dashboard on so the first one is going to be five three four one five three four one five three four one and the one for a web portal is just going to be 80 89 connected to port 80 which is gonna be its own internal port so now that i have this in place i'm gonna go back to my terminal clear this up and all i'm gonna do right now put docker dash compose up and now we can see it found it it created it and now we can see my docker compose is up and running great so now that i have this up and running now i need to tell my application that it needs to refer to this to pass or to push the logs so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna update my app settings in order for me to add the syncs so as we have done before i can just take the other seri log sync and i'm gonna add it here to my app settings and what i also need to do is i need to add a new write to so the name it's gonna be as eq and i'm gonna specify the arguments for it it's gonna be pretty straightforward we're gonna specify the server url and this is the url that my logs will be pushed to and it's gonna be http slash forward slash localhost because it's running locally the port is gonna be 5341 and that's basically it from a configuration point of view here so now if i run this and we go back to my browser i'm gonna execute a few more requests 
And now if I go back to Rider, we can see here that my logs are populating. But now you may ask, how can I access the logs inside the dashboard? And for me to do so, I'm going to go back to my web browser and go to my local host, go to port 8089. And now we can see my SEQ dashboard is already up and running. We can see here that I can see all of the events that I've had available. I can go to dashboards. I can have an overview. We can see here the different level of information. I can create a new dashboard, customize it, do whatever I want with this. If I, I can go to alerts, if there's any alerts, I can see it here. We can see here the data for indexing, etc. As well, I can see the different settings that's coming here. Currently, I'm just opening it for all. I don't have any API key set up. I don't have any backup cluster, etc. Because currently, we're only running it locally for demo purposes. But of course, if you want to run it for full-fledged application, all of this needs to be set up. And the nice thing about this is I'm able to do very quick search. So I can see here, for example, all of my different logs. So if I want to, for example, see how many times my application or the request has been processed, I can look, for example, has started. And we can see it automatically filters in all of those different requests. And we can see here how many items I have. If we take a look, weather forecast processing has started. If we go to my code and go to my controller, we can see that this is something that has been processed here. So basically, it's picking up the logs that my application is pushing and I'm able to actually uh, search through it. And this is a very, very simple example of how powerful this is, but there's a lot of way where you actually customize it. The main purpose of this video is just to give you a quick introduction. If you'd like more detail about SEQ, how to utilize it, more advanced functionality, please let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to cover this in a future video. So this video has been a very quick introduction about how we can create a dashboard for our logs, as well as how we can actually add all of the configuration inside app settings rather than hard coding them inside our application. If you have any questions or clarifications, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.